Non mi fa un nome. 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 Non mi fa un So, hello, hello everyone, welcome to this uh, session of uh, Material Statistics Seminar. Uh, and for uh, today, we have a pleasure to see uh, Emmanuel, who will talk about Hamiltonian uh, paths and random between me, maths and gating. Okay, thank you, Jeremy. So, this is a joint work with uh, Philippe Di Francesco, probably uh, in Illinois now. And uh, Bertrand Duplantier, Olivier Guillemini, both are in this room, right there. And it was uh, released last uh, October and it was published uh, this January on the physics play. Okay, so the story starts with a simple, uh, a very simple uh, enumeration problem, I mean, simple, simple to state, uh, which which is the following. You imagine you have a, a straight line all the way from the west to the east to the east. Okay, this is a red line. And on this line, you draw a sequence of two n alternating black and white points. Okay, it's very important that they are alternating. Then you decide to connect all the black points to white points by a system of n non-crossing arches which can, you can draw either above or below, or below the line. And you ask how many ways, how many different ways can we, can we do so? I mean, you call ZN the number of ways to do so. And we have a formula for ZN, the answer so is no. What do we know about ZN? So, so this problem looks very simple, but actually it's not solved at the moment. So. But you have to be careful to really solve this problem because you can make a lot of variations which are trivial. Okay, but this variation here of the model is not. Okay. Yeah, sorry, so if you connect them by uh, only above and not below, that's so trivial. That's, trivial. Okay. Okay. that's an example of variation which is trivial. You can cook many variations which are trivial, but this one, this is the one which is not trivial. Okay, so I, we actually uh, we've introduced uh, this uh, small problem with Charlotte Christiansen and Jacob Nielsen in 1999. It's still unsolved. And uh, actually, at that time, we were interested in the famous uh, Meander problem, and we saw that this little problem should be somehow simpler and could tell us a few things about the Meander problem. So the Meander problem is now you have a straight line and you have a uh, a circuit which, which has to cross the line at two end bridges, okay? And uh, actually, it's, uh, it's, it's a closed system. And the problems are closed. First, this is uh, the multi-back bicolor. And then uh, you have arches connecting bicolor. Uh, here, the valency is three, and here, the valency is four. I'll be sure I'll explain. Okay. So what do we know? About this problem. Uh, not much, as I have told you, but we know the ZN for N up to 34 arches, that is 60, 68 points. Okay. In green here, you have the first numbers which we used in this paper in 1999. So we had 22 values, and since, since, since then, the you uh, the series was confirmed and extended up to 32 by a series for Laurier. And uh, for Christmas, I got two new, num two new numbers by Olivier Golinelli. Okay, and uh, since he released them, I can sh sh show you them. Okay, and this is uh, basically as far as we can go at the moment. Okay, 
And from these numbers, we can extract. First, uh, first we, what I should say, that we expect this, uh, this, uh, expect this, uh, sorry, this kind of uh, behavior for n goes to infinity, so that the agent should go like mu to t two n divided by n to some exponent, which we call two minus gamma by convention. But we don't know what are the values of mu, kappa, and gamma. But we can extract from the data. Uh, first of all, that the only thing which is easy is to show that it grows exponentially. So, uh, you can put a lower bound and an upper bound. <coughs> it grows exponentially, but the value, precise value of mu is not clear. Okay, and from the data, so first, first, first what you see is that it's uh, really uh, an exponential growth, okay, because this is a straight line. Okay, but if you look at, uh, at the number, you have the impression it's, it's multiplied by something more than uh, 9 or or so, but actually, if you do the correct analysis, you find that the uh, mu square, the value of mu square, value of mu square, is uh, even by 10.113 with this precision, and the value of gamma is even by this. Okay. That's, uh, and in the paper in 1999, we made this conjecture, which I'm going to tell you where it comes from, that gamma is equal to this quantity here. Okay. So, we make a big we make big progress when you realize that this problem which looks at one dimensional problem is actually a fully two dimensional problem. It actually a problem which has to do with uh, the uh, this statistical this, this statistical model, which is a, what was called fully packed loop model on drawn on the onecom lattice. So imagine you have a onecom lattice, okay? And on this onecom lattice, I am going to draw loops, but I'm, I demand that these loops visit all the vertices of the lattice. These loops are self-avoiding, mutually avoiding, and they visit all the vertices of the lattice. And I put the weight n per, per loop, so that's what I call the FPL of n models. FPL stands for fully packed loop. Okay. So why? What is the connection with our little problem? You see that. The onecom lattice, you can define it as being the regular lattice, okay, which is both cubic, means all vertices at degree 3, and by, by, actually bicubic, bicubic, so with all, all, all uh, vertices are bicolored in, uh, can be bicolored in black and white, with uh, black having only white neighbors, okay, conversely. Okay, so the onecom lattice is the regular bicubic lattice, and the model we shall so here is the FPL model on the regular bicubic lattice. But now we know that whenever we have a model on the bicubic lattice, on, on the lattice, okay. we can also, which is on a regular lattice, we can build the same model on the random lattice. Okay, so that's the problem of the random lattice. It has a random version where you still demand that the, the, the object, the, the, the graph below is big by cubic. Okay, and uh, so it is a, what I call the gravitational version of the model, which is fully packed loops drawn on a random B cubic lattice. So you see it's B cubic that at uh, all, all vertices are of degree three, and uh, all you can color them in black and white with only white having only black neighbors. And okay. So here we actually that, that was the. The main progress is basically in 1999 that we identify the model. Okay, I, I just finish the argument. Uh, so why why am I interested in this uh, in this uh, random version? Because now, if I imagine I have a single loop now, okay, which passes through all the vertices, and I can I can cut the loop somewhere, okay. And stretch it, send uh, its white, ex its black extremity to all the way, all the way to the left, and its white extremity all the way to the right. And what do I get? I get my little problem. So that was our main uh, result in 1999 that the, this model was actually the gravitational version of the FPL 
model, the MPL of n model, and more precisely, that corresponds to the limit n goes to zero if I want to have only a single loop. Okay. Okay, so our likely to a combinatorial problem is nothing but the problem of Hamiltonian cycles, means fully packed loop models, fully packed loops, okay, which where there is a single loop, I mean, n is now on random big to big maps instead of uh, on a regular lattice. Okay, is there any questions here? Okay, so why is it uh, interesting? Because we know that if we can relate some, some uh, results on the regular lattice to results on the random, uh, random uh, that is so. But by the way, the correct name is uh, automatization is random planar maps. And what they didn't say, but which is, which I should say, is that is, uh, on, on this on this side uh, on the on the left side the the, the network can be in general they can be infinite. But on this side the network has a finite size which I call capital N. So, oh, or A here. Uh, okay. So, yes. Yeah, so, what, what is what, what is uh, this uh, this, uh, this uh, relation between uh, regular lattice and random lattice? These are the famous uh, KPZ formula, which dates back like, uh, 1988. Okay, and which uh, so this work really called Yakov and uh, for instance, there are basically two, really two main relations. The first relation connects to the central shards. So whenever you have a critical system, which is described by the conformal field theory with central shards C, then it means that on the other side, you should have a partition function from your problem, which goes like mu to the A times A with an exponent gamma of C minus 3, where this gamma of C is given by this formula. Okay. So that's for the partition function. And now you can look at correlation function of operators phi, which are characterized by their conformal weight, hi, okay, which means that uh, this correlation function decreases with the distance. We we'll measure it uh, to some power for hi. Then, on this side, what you have, you have what's called a p-point correlator, which, which is a partition function again, but with now a number of inserted uh, Operators. I will show you what I mean by that uh, in, a, in a minute. And then the exponent changes from gamma <coughs> minus three, gamma c minus three, to gamma c minus three plus the sum of one minus delta of h i and delta of h, depends on both h and the, of the central charge c is given by this formula. So these are the two uh, <coughs> PC relations. So with this relation, okay. So what 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 it tells us is that. If I know things about the regular lattice, I know things about the random lattice. So in our problem, this means that I have to look at what do I know about the FPL model on the Olicom lattice. And then I will apply the KPZ formula to tell me what it gives me for my little problem. OK, so first of all, it was recognized quite clearly. OK, first of all, the, uh, the uh, FPL of N model is a uh, a particular uh, instance of uh, the ON model. Okay, so more pre more generally, we can define the ON model on the, the on the lattice, where you draw loops, but you do not impose that every vertex is visited. So some vertices can be not unvisited. Okay, so it's called this, the ON model means simply that we put a weight n per loop. Okay, and here you can also put a weight u per visited vertex. Okay, to control the number of visited vertices. Clearly, the FPL N model is obtained by taking U to infinity, so that you want to maximize the number of uh, visited vertices. Okay, so it's, it's fully packed. Okay, so what has been known for long is that the ON model on, on the Olicom lattice has this line, this we are in the U minus one N plane, okay? It has these two lines here, this one and this one, and this one of uh, fixed points, critical points, 
pre-close points, meaning fixed points of the renormation group flow, which occurs at a constant value of n. Okay, so this line here, this, so this is the equation of these of this two curves, the plus or minus here. This, this line corresponds to what is called the dance phase of the ON model, and it's a stable fixed point in the infrared. This one corresponds to what is called the dilute ON model, and corresponds to the transition, actually, of the ON model, because it's unstable. For instance, for the easing model, n equals 1, you see the easing transition is described by this fixed point. Okay. So this has been known for many years, actually for, uh, due to the work uh, of Ninois, I think, in the late eight, 1982. And it was realized, realized quite late, and actually I discovered in this paper, that in, uh, by writing this paper, thanks to the referee, that it was actually Richard Dickin who first noticed that in 1991, that the fully packed ON model is itself, so it corresponds to this, uh, so this uh, line here, and it was in infinity, U equals infinity, so minus one equals zero, is also a line of fixed points. Okay, so the, the, the FPLF N model, it's its own regime, it's a different regime from the dance regime, the youth regime. Okay, but it didn't, okay, just <coughs> computed, uh, a few, a few uh, observables by better ansatz, and they say that's a new, uh, a new critical point, a new crit line of critical points, and it's what later best understood by uh, Blutter and Neuys, who gave the inter inter interpretation, which I'm giving here, also Bachelor, Suzuki, Young, Van Def, De Geer, Neuys, all these papers in the second half of the 90s, the 90s, and then uh, it's still under study, I mean, uh, the, quite recent papers, there were still uh, things to compute about this model. Okay, so the argument, one simple argument given by Blood and Nenois is that because all the loops have even lengths, this, this, uh, this diagram should be uh, invariant by u to close to minus u. So this, these two curves, these two lines here, I should get the same below. And since this is a attractive, I uh, mean, the flow is like this here. It must be like this uh, here. Okay, so this has to be a, a line of unstable fixed points. That's the simplest argument for. But then you have the other argument because you can compute exponents and see that they are different from the exponents of the dense or dilute phase. Okay. Okay. So more precisely, uh, what do, what we know is that the central charge for the dense O n model depends on n. Okay, and it's equal to this formula, where g is given by this in terms of n. So from n you go to g, and from g you go to the central charge. Okay, and you have to take the determination where g is between zero and one for the dense uh, for the, for the dense uh, phase. And uh, what Blutter and Nino uh, showed in their paper uh, in 1994 is that the central charge for the fully packed loop model, which has to be bigger because the flow is going from this direction, as that of the dance uh, model, is actually exactly given by the same formula, except that the one is replaced by two. Okay. So this, I will give you, I will tell you in a minute why this one is replaced by two, and uh, the. Uh, what I want you to notice first that what, what is this one and this two? This basis is the value at n equals two. At n equals two, g equals one. Therefore, t dance is one and c two is two. The sense and the c of, c of two is two here. C p of two is two. Okay. Okay. So why two instead of one? So the idea comes from from the this. Uh, uh, if you, whenever you draw a loop, n equals two first corresponds to oriented loops. <coughs> when you have oriented loops which are fully packed, you can translate this into a system of three coloring, okay, with the colors A, B, and C. Okay, so the problem is you have three colors A, B, and C, and the three colors uh, are, are present around each vertex, okay. And when you look at that, 
And you imagine that the A edges, they correspond to the unvisited edges here. And the B and C edges, they make loops. Okay? And they correspond to the loops here. And the orientation BCBC BC or CBCB CB tells you how to orient these loops. You see that the models are actually completely equivalent. Okay, so N equals two fully packed model is equivalent to a three coloring problem of uh, the edges of the uh, hexagonal lattice. Okay, and th then what you want to do is add, uh, re I mean, uh, represent these uh, config configurations by a height variable, so which I call x. So x is a height variable that uh, grows, that changes by c, b, or a, depending on which uh, edge you cross, okay? It is important that the, 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 that the, 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 the vertices are bicolored. So you go, for instance, here for x to x plus b. If you go across a b edge with the left uh, point with being black, okay? Because if you go in the other direction, it's, if you go from, you have to subtract b if, if you have your, if you have on your left the uh, white vertex. Okay. So it's important here to have the big bicoloring to be able to distinguish uh, going up and going down. Okay, so in the so you have the same uh, rules for the, the loop uh, representation. And uh, here you see that whenever I make a t turn around one vertex, if I start with x, I will find after a turn x plus a plus b plus c because the three colors are represented on each vertex. So it has to be also equal to x, so it means that I have to impose that a plus b plus c is zero. So x is a two-dimensional height variable. Okay? And I could choose, I can choose a, b, c, uh, I mean like this, which is uh, the most natural choice. Uh, I mean, uh, <coughs> where A, B, C play the same role. Okay. An important point is that uh, that, that was, all, all this was for the fully packed uh, problem. Now for the dance problem, what happens is that you have a new kind of vertex. You, can, you have unvisited vertices. So for these unvisited vertices, you must demand that the x after one third is re, 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 again equal to x, and here you find that x plus 3a, so you must demand that 3a must be equal to 0, so a must be equal to 0, and we are also in a similar constraint around the visited vertices. So now means that a equals 0 and b plus cn must be equal to 0, so the dimension is now, the height is now a one dimensional variable. Okay, so that explains why you had a two instead of a one. Okay. Good. Okay. So with this height, you can cook some uh, Coulomb gas. All this is done by uh, this nice paper by Condev, Condev, De Gia, and Minois. So you can cook a Coulomb gas description of the. You can do. Coulomb gas description of the of the uh, of the model using this height variable. So actually, what you use is the average of the height variable at some position x. So it's an effective if you want it's an effective continuous field theory at, which describes the, the the model at large distances. So you introduce this coarse grain variable which is two dimensional. Okay, which can go psi of x. X is a position of the uniform lattice. Which is the average, so and define it properly. I mean, uh, it's not very important here. At position x, of the height at position x, and I am going to use instead of the, uh, the symmetric ABC a, uh, uh, vectors, I am going to use the vector a and the vector b2, which is b minus c, which is orthogonal to a. Good. So that's my basis, two dimensional, and my basis is a and b2. So A here has a norm 1 over square root of 3, and B, B2 has norm 1, okay? So when I, whenever I write uh, psi as psi 1A plus psi 2B2, then if I want 
to build the uh, grad file square, I should put in one one answer here. Okay, so this is just the grad file square which defines the which describes the fluctuations of the of the height, okay? And uh, <coughs> so whenever you have, uh, whenever you are at n equals zero, that's all what 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 is uh, what you get, okay? You get a free, free field, okay? Except that this field is uh, is actually uh, compactified. I mean, you you. you, you Two two uh, two values of the field which which uh, differ from uh, an element of this lattice, which is a triangular lattice, which I saw here, they correspond to the same coloring, so they correspond to the same height configuration. So uh, so, so you, so you should uh, keep this in mind, okay? And thus, for n equals two and for n not equal to two, you realize that first, how do you put weights for n? So for n equals two, you put, simply put the orientations on the loops. For n not equal to two, you have to put local weights for left and right terms. Or you know this by half. And uh, so you do it with the local weight. But then you realize that some of the loops don't get the correct weights, the loops which are not homotopic to a single point. OK, so you have to add this uh, extra a coupling with the curvature of, the, of your uh, of your uh, lattice. So imagine you are on a cylinder, for instance, with the loops which go around the cylinder won't get the correct uh, weight until unless you you add this uh, this coupling to this curvature. So I insist here on the fact that these couplings were uh, applies only on the coordinate side two, the second coordinate, and not on the first coordinate. And the values of g and e0 can be computed. And the g I told you before is equal to, to this. One way to, to, to get it is demanding that some operator is marginal. I don't want to enter into details here. And this is g is g1, one, one, 1 minus e0. e0 is also given by this. Okay. And the central charge then is equal to 2 coming from these two, two dimensions. And this is a correction coming from the, the OM. Wait. And uh, so that's a coulomb gas description, uh, which is the uh, effective description at, at a large uh, scale. Okay. Now, if you are in the dance phase, this is exactly the same thing. Okay. Instead of, except that you don't have any, in any direct, a direction, a is equal to zero, as I told you. So then you lose one coordinate, you lose this term. Here, psi 2 is now an element of R question T by Z, and therefore the, the, the central, ch central charge is 1 minus instead of 2 minus. Okay. Is there a way to read the uh, equations and write one field uh, gets a charge at the infinity? Psi 1 and psi 2. Okay, the only thing I could say, which is not really that. A, the direction A does, is not, is not uh, connected to the, to the loops themselves. The loops, these are BC loops. So that's, and no, that's, yeah. that, okay, that's a yeah. very vague uh, argument, but that's, that's the reason. A, the loops are BC loops, and uh, they're not related to A. Okay, so. Now, when, when in, in this, in this Coulomb gas description, we have access to what we call magnetic correlations of magnetic operators. So it's simply in terms of the height variable. Whenever you have a height variable, you can have dislocation for this height. Okay, so dislocation is a point where when you go around that point, the, uh, you get a change of height, which is not zero, which is given by M, which is called the magnetic charge. So you must put a dislocation. If you put a dislocation somewhere, you must put the anti-dislocation anti somewhere else with charge minus m, so that things are well behaved at infinity. And then you get a, a change of central charge uh, of uh, free energy, <laughs> uh, a change of free energy which goes like r to the minus h. r is the distance <coughs> between the two dislocations for hm, and hm is computed by Condé, Gilbega, and Minois, when m is equal to phi 1a plus phi 2b2, so I'm using, a, a, again, the same basis, a b2, then that's the formula for h. Okay. 
or transfer n equals zero, where you have g equals one half. This is the formula. Okay. So examples. Okay. The first example is m equals b plus two a. So you, you imagine you want to describe a loop which is open instead of closed. So when at, at the starting point of the loop, you see that the configure the, uh, the if I go around that point, I see two b two a and one b. Okay. So it's uh, the, the, change of, the change of height after one turn is 2a plus b. And somewhere else, I would, should have the opposite, uh, at the end point, I should have the opposite uh, magnetic charge. Okay? And h of b plus 2a is equal to, to this, actually, is equal to 0. It happens to be 0. Therefore, there is no good reason why it's 0 but it's 0. Okay? Another example is uh, a, a point where which from which you you have two arrows which exceed from the point, meaning that you have two instead of having a single loop, you have one loop going in one direction and one pass sorry and one pass going in the other direction, and all together they form a loop. Okay, so now the the chart is m is a plus two b. Okay, and actually the h is also equal to zero. And here the reason is true is clear for at n equals zero. So that's what you're computing here. It is actually, you see the probability that these two points belong to the same loop. Okay. So for the ON model, there is a single loop, so the probability is 1, so that's why h equals 0. So no h, all h are not 0. You can, for instance, introduce a defect, so vacancy defect. So some, somewhere, some, suppose that you, in the new FPL model, in the fully packed model, there is a, a point which is not visited, so it's a defect. Now equal to 3a, and somewhere else you have another defect. Then the h is equal to 3, whatever it is, 3 half. Okay. It's actually a relevant perturbation, and uh, which because you, your fully back loop uh, fixed point is uh, unstable. Okay. So now I can use the, the, the KPZ prediction. <coughs> so in particular, the first uh, KPZ formula tells me that the partition function for normal model, so it's my uh, simple uh, little problem, should grow like mu to the a, a to the gamma of minus 3, where gamma is given by this. And for n equals 0, it corresponds to gamma equal to, to c equals minus 1. Okay. And uh, a, the area, in my, in my case, is simply 2n, the number of uh, of uh, points and zn, the small zn is not is not the partition function, but it's a partition function multiplied by 2n because I cut somewhere. Okay, so it's a trivial factor here. Yeah. And therefore, sorry, therefore uh, it goes like mu to the 2n divided by n to 2 minus gamma instead of 3 minus gamma. Okay, and if you take this formula, you get this value of gamma, and that's what we what we pre predicted with uh, Charlotte Christiansen and Jacobis in 1999. Okay. Here I want to insist on the, it's very important that uh, you are bicolored, okay? Because if you are not bicolored, if you just look at the same fully packed problem, but now on, on uncolored uh, random maps, what you get, as I, I told you, if you are not colored, you cannot distinguish between, for instance, the two sides of the unvisited, uh, of the unvisited uh, edge, okay, and therefore you should you should set a equals zero. Okay, it corresponds to the dance setting. So the dance setting you you find it of course for the dance model, but you also find it for the fully packed model whenever the model is defined on the cubic map instead of a big cubic map. Okay. And therefore, the, the central charge is that of the dense model is minus 2, and uh, the exponent is minus 1, and then you should have uh, an, uh, an exponent n3 here, and that's what you get, because from that case, you have uh, an exact formula. As I told, told you, uh, any variation of my problem is simple, so oh, they are all sorts of solvable, so this one is, 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 for instance, if you forget about the colors, then it's trivial, and you get the... Uh, the, the correct exponents. Okay, but in our case, okay, we are at c equals minus one and not c equals minus two, so the gamma is non-trivial equal to this. Okay. Okay, so 
What I mean, can we verify that? Yes, so we can verify that by uh, by making, as I told you, numerical simulations to compute the data exactly for small sizes. So I told you we can go as far as n equals 34. Okay, so we do use two types of uh, approaches. The first approach is a transfer matrix approach. Okay, so you build your construction from left to right, and at some point, you, when you are here, for instance, you retain the color of these arches which have been open but are not yet closed. Okay, so this one is black, this one is black, this one is white, for instance. You have a sequence here of, uh, of uh, colored uh, vert vertices, okay, and when you go from one step further, okay, if you, 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 you realize what, what can happen here, you can uh, open or close or whatever. So you have a transfer matrix, P white, here, and you go further, etc., and therefore you have an alternation T of n, n times T white, T black, okay, and you will start from uh, the, the, the vacuum and end at the vacuum. Okay. Whenever you you code these uh, 0 and 1, with this color by 0 and 1 and by a number in uh, base 2. It means that a state is, co is, uh, in is indexed by two integers, okay, and uh, the vacuum is, 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 uh, is uh, 1, 1, and okay, so that's a uh, simple transfer approach. Actually, for the partition function, that's the best algorithm. For the correlate, for correlators, it's not, it's not, it's not true. The second algorithm is better for, for correlations. So the other uh, approach is, which is closer in spirit of what we did in 1999, is simply you, you decide first, it's kind of orthogonal, you decide first which, which objects are going to be connected to, to the, to, from, on the top and which are going to be connected on the, uh, below the curve. Okay. And whenever you have this, uh, you, you, have, you, have, you have chosen this, you have this, a certain sequence of colors which is no longer alternating, and for this sequence of colors, you have a certain number of possibilities to close it by arches. For instance, here it's two for this particular sequence. Okay, you do the same. The advantage is that it somewhat decouples the, what's, what happens on the top and what happens on the bottom. Okay, so we have two, two completely different approaches, so that's important so that we can trust our numbers. Okay. Because it's very easy to make a mistake with a, a combinatorics in this thing. So, okay. And so, suppose now that you want to that you want to look at uh, an observable which which grows, I call generic generically an observable T n which goes like mu to the T n divided by n to some exponent beta which depends on t beta t here. So whatever you, what, 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 you, what do you do? You take the sequence t n plus one over t n. This gives you tens when n goes to infinity to mu square. So that's the way you, we measure mu square. And you take the, this quantity here, this, this pi ratio, okay, which is such that uh, it tends to the exponent beta t here, okay. So basically, that's what you, we construct to get estimates for mu square and beta t. If you do that, and only that, you want to get a, a very reliable results. What you have to do is also is use some acceleration methods. Okay. Uh, for instance, which corresponds to replacing this one of these sequence by another sequence which has the same limit but which converges faster. Okay, so one way, for instance, is uh, uh, to you look at this. this uh, this sequence in the defined in terms of the finite difference operator, okay, so which basically suppresses the first corrections and get, lets you uh, converge much more rapidly. For instance, I give you just an example because uh, I think that's impressive. If you if you take the catalog numbers, okay, which are these numbers which are very well behaved, okay, and you look for the three half here. So you take the quantity which I call B, so that's the quantity is in red. So that's what you get from the 20 plus 20 catalog. Okay. So you're quite far from uh, from 1.6, 1.5, sorry, from, from 3 half. Okay. But if you use this convergence algorithm five times, okay, you get this yellow points here, and which means that you're already uh, at three at three half 
for the third point, the third point is actually computed with 3 plus 2 plus 5, uh, 10 numbers. So from the 10 first Catalan numbers, you can get 1.5 with a very good accuracy. Okay, but you have to use these convergence algorithms. Otherwise, if you, if you stay with your uh, initial data, uh, I mean, it's not good, but with, with acceleration of uh, convergence, then uh, you get very, very reliable results. Okay, so that's what we did for, uh, for our data. So with our data, we, the first uh, curve here on, on the top uh, represents the estimate. Of, so now it's for my Tn equal to Zn, my, 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 my numbers. And uh, I show different types of uh, convergence algorithms. We use different types, okay? But all we give we by the value uh, mu, mu squared equals 10.113, okay? And the exponent, which is, here it's not gamma, but 2 minus gamma, which I measure, which is 2.77, which is response, which is very good, I mean, in terms of the, so that's what we had already in uh, 1999. So the new numbers up to 34 did not really improve. They improved uh, the, the, uh, yeah, the precision for this one, but not for this one. That's because we don't really go uh, uh, We don't know exactly what what the what the form of, precise form of the corrections. So, so the, the, these algorithms have their limitations. And here, that we have this uh, limitation of the algorithm, we cannot go to a better precision. Okay. Okay. So, so for the partition function, everything works fine. And uh, that's and uh, in the Meander problem, we did the same thing in 2000 with Olivier Golidi and Philippe Francesco. And at that time, we also looked at other operators, other geometries of Meanders. And we did simulations again with uh, Olivier, but also with just uh, and uh, everything worked perfectly. I mean, uh, all the different geometries which we looked at, all the different operators which we inserted, uh, we got the, uh, the, I mean, the, the numerics we, we correspond uh, exactly to what we expected from KPZ. So KPZ works for members. Okay. So, uh, but at that time we forgot to to look at the operators for this simple model. And uh, I was expecting that KPZ would work also, so, so let's check that. So what are the, uh, the uh, operators which I want to consider? So as before, uh, I, I can, I can uh, have an open line, okay? So instead of having a, an, an, an infinite uh, uh, in a cycle, I can take an open line. So an open line means it starts somewhere here, okay? And here, the forget about these dashes here. It starts here, and uh, the, the means I, may, I have put a defect here. Maybe you see it better here, okay? Which is uh, 2a plus b. That is three half of a plus one half of b two, okay. So that's my first uh, kind of uh, correlation function, which I, which I which I can consider, which corresponds to having an open uh, an open uh, line. So having an open line allows me to go around the line, okay, and connect uh, some of the vertices on top to vertices. Uh, so from going from top to bottom here, okay. So that's the first uh, new new object which I can consider, which has its own generating function, uh, partition function. And uh, another another one is uh, the same thing, but with univalent. Here, yeah, these these are univalent uh, endpoints. So now it's uh, that's the, the the magnetic charge is B is equal to this. Okay, I can now also look at problems whenever I have uh, vacancies, I mean vertices which are not visited by the, by the loop. Okay, so for instance, here I have two vertices which are univalent, which are not visited by the loop. It corresponds to M equals A, you could have M equals 2A, which corresponds to bivalent vertices which are not visited by the loop. A vertex here and a vertex here. And also I can put 
one charge 2a and two charge minus a, uh, b valent vertex and two uni valent vertex. So I can look at all these uh, different uh, configurations, and they all have a different partition function, and they all have a different exponent. Okay? And now, first check that they have the same value of mu. So this is a plate, and it's the first check on, on, on our numbers, and if it, it works, they all give the same value of mu. Okay? But they give, they're supposed to give uh, different exponents. Okay, so I made a list of the exponents which you which you get from uh, from the KPZ formula. Okay, so it depends on whenever you have a magnetic charge given by phi one and phi two here, you get this classical dimension or conformal weight here. From this conformal weight, you get the this delta here, and this, from this delta, you get the exponent here. So we saw that for, for z, for z, 2 minus gamma works perfectly. Now what about the other five quantities? Okay. Oops. So that's something I didn't expect at all. This is the numerics. Okay. This is the, the, the KPC prediction. So except for the first one, for the partition function, all the others I mean, don't, they don't match. They are systematically bigger than what APZ uh, predicts. Okay, so, so we were a bit uh, annoyed with that. But uh, actually, uh, okay, so what can we do? So actually, uh, then we, we have this idea to look at what happens for n equals 1. You see, we have the same problem. And so for n equals 1, since now you have uh, a number, not, not only one, but a number of loops, and these loops are unoriented. n equals 1, there is no orientation. Okay, so when you look at the uh, fully packed model at n equals 1, and you look at the environment of uh, an unvisited edge, here, what you see is that you have this unvisited edge, which connects the black to the white vertex, and you have uh, one loop passing here, and one loop uh, passing there. Okay, so what I can do is uh, put arrows which carry no information. I, I just put arrows which point towards black vertex and away from white vertex. So that's no new information, that's redundant information. Okay, let me do that. And then I will squeeze this edge to make it a four valent vertex, but I keep the arrows. And now that I have the arrows, I can go back because from here I know exactly where to cut to come back here, okay? I must uh, put together the two arrows which come, which, <coughs> which, uh, which go to the, to the tetrahedron vertex here, and together the two arrows which go away from the tetrahedron vertex. So this is a bijection, okay? okay. And this vertex is a particular instance, I mean, uh, of the more general six vertex model. So the six vertex model uh, on the random Tetravalent planar map actually has only two different vertex vertices, okay, because of the symmetry uh, rotation. And uh, these are the two, uh, the, the, two the two vertices. So the six vertex, I remind you, is you have as many entering arrows and exiting arrows. Okay, so we have two configurations of two rotation. This one, which I'm interested in, and this one where you have where the the, the, the coming arrows are face to face and so these are the two configurations, and this one usually comes with a weight 2 plus pi lambda. Okay. And it's good because when I put lambda equals 1 half, this term disappears, and I recover my little problem here, which is uh, equivalent objectively to the FPL model at n equals 1. So I know that the central charge, if I compute it for the FPL at n equals 1, is 1, which corresponds to that of the six vertex models. Also good. Okay. And. Uh, in the, in, in the six vertex model, what you can do is uh, change the, the uh, these, uh, use this orientation to define the loops. Okay, so these loops have nothing to do with my my loops uh, of the FPL model. It is completely different loops. Okay, and you can compute with these loops uh, what are the so-called water balloon exponent, which corresponds to having a, a, a number of paths. Uh, Exiting one vertex and uh, 
and really connecting at another vertex, okay, you have had such paths. And uh, the, the delta, which I call delta L, corresponding to this kind of effect, was computed uh, by Ivan Postov in uh, 2000. And it's L over 8 for, for this value of, uh, of lambda. Okay. So this is an exact result obtained from uh, matrix models. Okay. So what is the KPC prediction now? I go back to my fully fact model at n equals 1. So that's the formula for, for the uh, conformal weight at n equals 1. Okay. And uh, how do I get a, a, a point from which L uh, arrows exit? Okay. To, to, to do that on, on my problem, uh, on, Big to big cubic lattice, I have to put a black vertex here, which has L over 2 uh, edges, okay, connecting to three valent uh, vertices. Okay, so it corresponds to the magnetic charge L over 2 A, so that's for L even. Okay, and for L odd, I have to put two defects, one uh, with L minus 1 over 2 A, and a small, another defect with minus B here. Okay, so that's a magnetic charge for L odd. And if you compute the uh, dimension H for L even or for L odd, now you use this formula. And uh, what you get is this quantity, L square of the 672, for, for both L even and L odd. And the, the KPC formula for uh, central charge 1 it tells you that delta is square root of H. So you get L over 6 square, square root of 2, okay, instead of uh, L over 8. So we have the problem here. And the, the simple way to solve this problem is just to replace this one here by 9 over 8, okay. So if you do this, <coughs> you change this one by n over 8, uh, 8 of 9 over 8, sorry. Then you recover the, the correct results. So don't tell me why we should do that, but if we do that, it works. Okay. So let's try to do the same for the n equals zero. So I'm going to change h by just just acting on the. But what's important here to realize is I'm acting only on this first coordinate. Somehow the second coordinate, which describes the loop, is completely. Well, it, I mean, it's the, 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 the Hamiltonian and, and, and everything is, is completely frozen. I actually cannot touch this part, but I imagine I touch the, the first, first uh, component with a, with, a, with a parameter alpha. So I, I can vary alpha. So alpha equals zero corresponds to KPZ. Alpha equals one, sorry, corresponds to your KPZ prediction, which don't work. They, Okay, here in between the lines, the, it corresponds to my, uh, my estimates for the exponents. Okay, they are somewhere between these lines. And with the same color, you have the, the KPC prediction, but now with alpha here. But, okay, and you see that there is a value of alpha around four third, where basically, but mainly most of these values, I mean, they fit not perfectly, but still the fit is, is pretty good. Okay, and uh, here is the fit actually. Uh, if you put numbers, okay. So it's uh, to me it's uh, perfect for uh, one, two, three, four, five of them, and with this, the, this, 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 the last one is a bit in different, but not that much. I mean, in, in, I mean to me it's it's uh, perfectly uh, compatible. To fit from, uh, we might disagree, but uh, <coughs> okay. So, uh, the, uh, so what did I what did I do actually? Uh, if if you remember uh, the uh, Coulomb gas action, I had the, I had a free field which was described by this part and this part, but the one third was only due to the change of norm between the, the a direction two directions, okay, but I had the same G, 
I use the same G1 equal G2 equal G with this. Okay, and then there is this uh, correction. In which uh, the one way to get uh, the value is here of <coughs> G2 equals to G, okay, given by this formula, was to demand that this is marginal. So as we, as we noticed already, or all, basically, the, this term acts only on, on side two, so it allows me to determine G, G2, but actually not really G1. So what should I take G1 equal G2? There is no good, I mean, there is no good reason. And uh, for the, uh, so what fixes G1? I, I don't know, actually, I don't know. So it seems that G1 must be equal to G2 for the regular relative. But whenever you couple it to a uh, uh, unit field, for instance, to consider to, 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 to find a, a random lattice, you don't know exactly what fixes G1. And uh, so what I what we propose is that for okay for G equal two thirds at n equal one, we know that uh, this this we know that we must multiply, take alpha equal nine over. Eight, which corresponds to G1, which is alpha G equals three quarter. We know because we have the exact results by Ivan Kostov. So we have to, to have to take J1 equals to this. For uh, n equals zero, we propose that for four third is the correct value. Then we have to take G1 equals to this. And for G equals one corresponds to n equals two. Then the symmetry between the three colors say that G1 must be equals to G2 equals one in that case. Okay, so in all cases, you have G1 is 2 minus G, 1 over 2 minus G, sorry. So we propose that, we conjecture that uh, probably we, we, uh, we should, that, that's, that's a recipe. So far, it's a recipe. But the fact that uh, G1 is not the same for uh, the regular and the random lattice is something which uh, Ivan uh, already observed for the uh, six vertex model. It may happen that the compactification radius changes when going from the regular to the... And here we seem to have a similar uh, phenomenon. Okay, so uh, just to, to conclude, uh, this value, uh, 1 over 2 minus g, is not, uh, it's not a newcomer in the, in the world of the ON model. Okay, it, 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 it appears. Uh, so if, if I look the, at the dense, what is what, what is best known is the, the dense and the dilute OIN model, but we also have the fully packed OIN model, which is here. Okay. So all for, for a given value of n, for this we had these three fixed points, this stable fixed point and the two unstable fixed points. They are given by uh, the value of g, the corresponding value of g uh, is. Uh, given by n at minus 2 pi, 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 pi g, but there are different determinations. So here you must take g between uh, 0 and 1, as I told you. And then here for the dilute, you must take the other determination, which is 2 minus g. Okay, the central charge is given by this for the dance, for, uh, for the dance model, it's 1 plus this for the fully packed model. And for the dilute model, is given by the same formula here, but with g replaced by g, g tilde. Okay, so it's a different central charge. Okay, and uh, and what, what what we see here, this one over two minus g, is that you can get it from this by simply take one over g tilde. Okay, it's one over two minus g. So it's a different value of n, but it's the same central charge as the dilute uh, uh, phase. And this transformation, which sends g into one of one over g, is simply with a known duality, which uh, transforms a dilute problem into a dense problem. So what does it mean? It means that here actually I have loops which I didn't draw in this part here. I, I, you should imagine I have loops, and this dense, uh, sorry, this this dilute, uh, I mean the 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 hull of the of this uh, dense loop turns out to be. Uh, the uh, this this dilute model. That's the, the external perimeter of the, the external perimeter of the, the frontier of the so that's uh Bertrand with the, the expert this means the, the external perimeter of the of this problem. So here for n equals 
what, zero, it corresponds to n prime equals one. So n prime equals one is what we are from, is uh, it's a relation. Okay, so the, the, the extent of the, <coughs> so I mean, so, so, of yeah. Well, yeah. okay. So, as we have said, it has this uh, exponent 1 over 2 minus HT. So we don't know here why it comes. I mean, we just observe that uh, if, we, if we do that, it solves basically all our problems. But, uh, and uh, we were kind of surprised. But uh, I think I wish Peter to finish here. I mean, uh, just to tell you that uh, this little problem is still uh, resisting. Thank you. <coughs> yeah, so you, you have this fully packed uh, model which the central charge is 1 plus the central charge of the dense model. Right? For the dense model, I think we, we know more or less the continuous field theory and, for example, the torus partition function. But for the fully packed case, I mean, what would be the continuous field theory? Uh, the, I'm not the expert, but apparently there are still people who are thinking of this paper. I, I, I don't know uh, if it is. There are parts which are the parts same. The parts are exactly the same. The big part the big part. Right. Uh, no, okay, yeah. what Bertrand said is correct. I mean, uh, all, those, all the observables which didn't depend on A, basically, all the, all the all this part of the spectrum, you recover it in the, in the fully packed model, but you have other observables. Okay, you have new, so it's, it's the tensor in model plus other other operators. So it's, other, it's more complicated, and I'm not sure it's understood at the moment. I couldn't understand how you did here when you have the line with, with one vertex which is not visited by the. Yeah. So, because you have one vertex which is not visited, but it has three neighbors. Yes. You should be two places if you attach it on the line. You choose one place to attach it. Okay. No, the, the point is uh, the, uh, yes, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, what, what, what the defect which I'm describing here is a univalent vertex which is not really divided by that. Okay, when, whenever I'm on, I'm on the on the random lattice, I can also, and I use it uh, several times with talk, I can also have a defect which is not only a vacancy defect but also a defect in the uh, degree of the vertex. So here it's a defect which is a vertex which is a both not visible and univalent. Okay. Yeah, you're right, it's two, two, type, two, two defects on top of each other. Right? Okay. I, I could make uh, m equals 3a, right? but it's more difficult to, to simulate. I could make a. Yes. But you have, but you have more, much more freedom for the defects of the original the random lattice. Le comportement de Zn est régi par deux exposants mu et gamma. Mu plus une fugacité. Et se poser sa question. Mu is not an exponent. That's why it's not bien français. Mu is a is a growth rate. It's just uh, it's probably mu is not uh, going to be. Uh, Universal in any way. I mean, you don't expect to, to compute it. Okay. I maybe that be my, my notation was uh, calling with you. So because it's not universal. It's not universal. But still, it's interesting to. We would, it would be interesting to have the exact value, or even if even it's not universal. Anyway, these, these problems of. of uh, yeah. Of fully packed loops or Hamiltonian cycles, etc., they are very sensitive to the 
lattice which is on, on which you draw them. So you definitely, if, even some exponents are vary from one realization to the other, so, you, so, so the universality is not as, as, uh, as strong as for Uh, what went wrong with the numerics for beta x, uh, yeah. where, where the agreement is not so? I don't know. What, uh, my, 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 my interpretation is that, uh, okay, you know this accelerating, <coughs> if you don't use accelerating uh, sequ sequential accelerating sequences, you, you don't see anything. Okay. So when you use them, somehow you make some uh, hypothesis on the corrections. Sometimes, and the only thing which is, uh, uh, the only criterion which tells me it's not so stupid to do this, uh, this uh, hypothesis is that it, con it converges to something. Because uh, we, we know cases where we, we don't really, for instance, when the, 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 the first uh, correction instead of being over 1 over n is 1 over square root of n, or something like that, etc. If you use this, you, you see that immediately. Okay, because you are not going to converge uh, at all. Okay, so the fact that you converge is a good point. Okay, but then uh, my my estimate of the error is what what I see varying, which is a pretty crude estimate. And uh, it seems this one was I, I was here is a sorry. The, this was actually uh, quite. Uh, well stabilized, <laughs> but uh, I have no explanation. Simply, I, the, the only thing I tell you is that if, if from the beginning I would have uh, got uh, this table, I would say everything works. Okay. Say so there's something wrong with this uh, beta x. Uh, Maybe due to some operations which I don't understand. Yes, that's something which happens also in uh, the Meander problem, where we used uh, for one of the observables. Basically, we had to use a different convergence algorithm because it didn't predict the correct value. But uh, still, we had the impression it converges, but it was converging to the bad, the bad value. And then we understood that because uh, basically this correction was with what they say with square root, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. In this case, that were even more subtle. It was not the first one, but the third one, which was not like, and so it was converging, but not to the correct value. And uh, if we do the correct thing, then we were able. Sometimes you have, it's, it's a, uh, I mean, it's not even, I mean, you play with these numbers, you want to extract some things, and uh, it's already a miracle that you can extract uh, ex exponents with. Uh, Pretty good uh, accuracy. So what we do is accuracy to be expected. Uh, I, 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 I underestimate. What did you, how you explain what is going on by a change in the KPZ formula? But that's what I understood. You use the you use the KPZ formula all right. the time. Yes. What you change is the conformal field theory on the uh, I'm just gravity. You don't touch the, right. the KPZ formula. But as I say, I do exactly what Ivan did for the for the six vertex model. Notice that the radius. I'm changing the radius of compactification of one direction, the a direction. So it's so it's. That's something on the plane. It has nothing to do with gravity. Right. right. But uh, that's what you should do even in the six vertex model to recover via KPC the, the correct uh, exponents. That's where. I mean, not here. I, I, I'm going from the fully back and it was one to uh, on, 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 on the cubic uh, maps to, to the six vertex model on, on tetravalent maps. But the natural way is go from the regular uh, six vertex model, that's what Ivan did, uh, compare the, the regular, which is not equivalent uh, to, to my problem, uh, my regular problem, okay? But the, the equivalent is only for the problems on a random map, but not on regular lattice. What, what Ivan 
So it told us that we were going to, from the six vertex model regular to the random, we had to do something like that. We had to change the radius. But if you do that, then then uh, then KPZ works. I, I'm, I'm, uh, am I right? Uh, That's not new, this, this kind of. Uh, but in the case of uh, Ivan, he was able to was able to compute exactly. Uh, so he knows exactly by what amount, how how we, how we must change the, the. Here we don't know how we must. Change. So this four third or this, I mean, this eight, nine over eight, we know for sure. But this four third, we don't know for sure. Because we don't have the the argument to. Predict what, what is the alpha which we should be used. I have a question which is not well defined. <laughs> uh, <coughs> so in the in the matrix models uh, activity, uh, people notice this uh, sequel to one barrier. Mm -hmm. So you the central charge cannot be more than than one, sure. and this is. Uh, uh, this is manifested by the fact that if you look at the random surface uh, with loops, for example, uh, uh, it uh, will start to, to resemble a branch polymer right. yeah, in, in this, uh, at this point. Yes. So in your case, when you have uh, fully packed uh, loops, yes. uh, the, um, uh, the C equal to one barrier <laughs> is for n equal to zero. Yes? No, it's for n equal to one. Uh, let me see. Uh, uh, one plus one, uh, but one. That's one. If for n equals one, that's the six vertex one. model. Oh, yeah. oh sorry. C, C, C O N is equal to zero, which is ah, okay. n equal to one. Yes, yes, of course. So, uh, can you do you have some intuition what happens uh, at this point when uh, n approaches one? Uh, what happens with the with the random surface? That's so that you cannot continue. Uh, why, 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 why do I not know? Uh, something I did not mention is that we have a simple interpretation for this two-dimensional height because this has to do with uh, actually a folding problem in two dimensions. So you fold a, a regular lattice. Okay, for, for the regular problem, you fold a regular trivial lattice onto itself. So that the uh, the uh, the resulting object is regular, and you have coordinates. We have two two-dimensional coordinates, and these are these coordinates. These, these two. Dimensional. So we know what what is uh, the what is the meaning of the, these two-dimensional height variable, and uh, we know also uh, and the bicoloring is also the now if you have a random lattice, the bicoloring is a condition for you. Now you have a random uh, lattice which is. Uh, which is dual to a random triangulation, and the, there is a condition for random triangulations to be foldable in, on, in the plane. <coughs> that's the bicolorability, actually. So we understand all this, but uh, what happens uh, at n equals one? Uh, I, I, I don't know. But definitely, uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, this branch polymer uh, uh, phenomenon is going to happen. I mean, for 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 n larger than one, for n between one and two, for instance, it will be probably, a, my, my surface will be probably a, like a branch polymer. But I don't know what precisely make it uh, change behavior at any point or no, I don't know. I think it's difficult to to, uh, to, uh, yes, to realize what is the what is really happening, but maybe you can you can uh, see it on, uh, numerically if you uh, generate. Uh, OK, so that's a good. Uh, Point, yes. If not, let's thank Emmanuel again.